Joe, so record high temperatures are being reported around the world. According to federal government data, over the next 30 years, the number of extremely hot days in a year, it's expected to more than double in many parts of Canada. Yep, St. John's recorded its second hottest July, and the heat warning continues today in parts of British Columbia. So here to tell us how extreme heat can affect your health and the best way to stay protected this summer is the president of the Ontario Medical Association and emergency room physician, Dr. Rose Zacharias. Hello and welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Thank Dr. Zacharias. We're very excited to be chatting with you today. Mm -hmm. Can we start very basic? Hmm. Why is it important that people know about the, the risks of extreme heat? Absolutely. So as doctors, especially for vulnerable people who um, experience symptoms during extreme heat, we want them to recognize the signs mm -hmm. because you can prevent extreme heat illness. So for caregivers, especially of older adults, um, really important. And we know that extreme heat has been experienced last year, I don't know if you remember, but in British Columbia for a one week stretch, temperatures averaged over 45 degrees Jeez. Celsius Oof. and over 600 people died as a result of extreme heat related illness. So definitely a public health concern. Okay, so let's go into some of those. Like how do we recognize the signs? What are the signs of heat exhaustion or maybe before we even get yeah. there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good to categorize into mild signs and symptoms and then more extreme signs and symptoms. So those mild signs and symptoms, as you can imagine, you get thirsty, mm -hmm. you start to sweat and sweat actually are our bodies are intelligently designed. Sweating um, helps to internally regulate our body temperature. The sweat comes to the surface of your skin, evaporates, and decreases your internal body temperature. But then exposure to extreme heat for longer can produce a rash, maybe swelling of your hands and feet. And then severe signs, such as severe dehydration, can actually not just deplete your body of fluid, but really important electrolytes like mm -hmm. sodium and mm -hmm. potassium. And when that's the case, that can cause strain on your heart, can lead to a heart attack. People can exhibit signs of stroke, confusion, altered levels of consciousness, and even cardiac arrest. Wow. So really important, um, before we get to that stage, we talk about how to prevent the extreme heat effect on your body. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is very personal for me because mm. I'm a fainter. Mm. So I'm good for one faint every summer. I, wow. like it's, and it's, it's, it's like, I mean, we, my family jokes about mm. it, but it can be dangerous. Like Yasek has yeah. had to catch me to prevent me from. Mm. So um, what can we do if we are, ex I, I know I'm familiar with it. What mm. can we do if we're experiencing heat exhaustion and uh, like all those symptoms? So so really important to keep your mm -hmm. water bottle handy yeah. uh -huh. and take little sips of even plain water all day long and then bring an umbrella to the beach look for shade in uh, in a park and also you know reach out to your neighbors mm -hmm. at this time of year when there's you know stretches of hot long days not everyone has access even to the air conditioned public right. spaces or a swimming pool in a backyard so it's actually a good time of year to check on someone who's maybe a a little bit more socially isolating and mm -hmm. to see, are they doing okay? Can you share what you have? Invite someone over to your backyard to jump in a pool or um, suggest that you go to a beach together. Um, so really important to look out for each other and yourself by mm -hmm. carrying that water bottle. Mel, that's why I have to stay off that patio. See, <laughs> come into the air conditioning with me. Come into the air conditioning. <laughs> All right, I'll keep you in the shade on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, like sort of mm -hmm. reaching out to neighbors, but who else should we be watching and reaching out to? Like who mm -hmm. might suffer mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. from extreme heat? Older adults, okay. so um, especially those with underlying chronic medical conditions. So heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, asthma, we mentioned lung disease. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who's got asthma or chronic bronchitis and you're reaching for your puffers a little bit more often, yeah. mm -hmm. then you need to be aware that um, you may be suffering some extreme heat exposure. Also, little babies. So think about yeah. the ones, right? So tiny bodies, a little bit more surface area. And so their bodies will heat up really quickly. And so as their caregivers, we need to be mindful. And a good way to think about it is on a hot day, think about what you're comfortable wearing, right? Mm -hmm. Loose, comfortable fitting clothing. So don't wrap your newborn in that tight baby blanket. Just um, <gasps> let them also cool off. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's really important to think of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're just beginning to have conversations about the relationship between our physical health and our mental health. And it's mm -hmm. great. It's great that we are making that connection. So what is, um, you know, the relationship between extreme heat exposure and our mental health. 
Mm -hmm. So extreme heat is an additional mental health stressor. Yeah. At this stage, two and a half years into the pandemic, we've experienced as a population and as communities a lot of mental health stressors job loss, parenting stress, uh, schooling your kids at home, mm -hmm. and uh, even the economic impact mm -hmm. of the pandemic. So I would say extreme heat, these sorts of long stretches of hot summer days is that additional stressor. We know that in Canada, prior to the pandemic, one in five people said they were suffering from depression, anxiety, and the pandemic has definitely escalated that. So we have more mental health issues in the healthcare system mm -hmm. as doctors were calling for positive action for increased mental health supports in our communities to uh, to make sure we can all stay healthy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I am a sun worshiper. I'm, I'm mm. trying to get over <laughs> that a little bit, mm. but I love the sun. So is there a way to enjoy the hot weather in a safe, it really in a safe way? And that includes, is there a safe amount of sun exposure? Mm -hmm. Is there a safe mm. amount of time to be able to withstand the high temperatures? Mm. So do you always bring your sunscreen? Uh, sunscreen is a given. Yeah, I mean, I, it's sure. a crop top and short shorts, but, it's, yeah, yeah. but I'm sunscreened, but everything's covered. Yeah, so I mean, I love summer too, and we really want to enjoy it in a healthy way. So bring your sunscreen, wear a hat, bring that umbrella to the beach. Um, think about on the really hot days how to um, spend your time. So even if you're otherwise healthy and you're looking for a window on a summer day to go for a run or a bike ride or do some gardening that might be a bit more exertional, don't pick the middle of the day. Better the right. morning or the evening. Right. And then look ahead at the forecast. Maybe that Saturday off isn't the best time to be outside. Maybe a public space like an air-conditioned library or walking in a mall. Those are safer ways to deal with a, a really hot day. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's end with the sort of elephant in the room, aka mm. climate change. Is this mm. something that we're going to have to mm -hmm. consider moving forward? Mm. So healthcare doesn't exist in a vacuum. Yeah. And uh, a healthy population depends on a healthy planet. And as doctors, we are scientists and we follow the evidence. And so we know going forward, we will need to contend with long, hot days. Now, we all have a role to play in mm -hmm. uh, combating and mitigating the risk of the elevated rate of climate change, but a lot of the practical tips and suggestions that we shared today are really healthy ways to enjoy the summer days that we have. I think even here this week, we're forecasting you know, high temperatures, mm -hmm. so really mm -hmm. good to think about yourself, think about your families, think about your friends and your neighbors so that we can all love be healthy. That. And enjoy I love that. love that. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, and thanks for sticking around. Wasn't that just fantastic? You know where you can get some more all-around great content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with all the laughs and thought-provoking chats you could ask for. So do yourself a favor, like and subscribe now.